Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm kind of Today, I'm going to. I'm, I'm getting in. Oh. Thank you. I'm going to talk about uh, behavioral driven development uh, uh, with Java and Cucumber. Uh, I have been uh, a Java programmer for very long and once I found, found about Cucumber and uh, used in my project, it was really fabulous and uh, it helped us to, to really meet uh, the customer's needs. So I thought I'll share the, the knowledge you know, and the experience I have using both Java and Cucumber. This is my uh, second uh, opportunity to be here in uh, Czech. So I'll be talking about uh, uh, behavioral development, uh, uh, behavioral de development uh, in a overview, and then we'll look at the, the format that behavioral de driven development uh, you know, gives, and uh, we'll go with uh, uh, you know exploring BDD with uh, Cucumber, and uh, we'll look at what is a Cucumber stack and what are the advantages that we get. And we'll look at our particular one that is the Cucumber JVM uh, of interest to us. And we'll uh, explore using uh, uh, Cucumber and Java uh, with uh, uh, one of the possibilities using the IntelliJ ID. And we'll have a little uh, information on uh, what is Jeb and uh, you know how relevant that here. And we'll have a demo. So. This is the agenda we have today. So BDD is actually, it started off for like more than I think 10 years by Dan North. He's the first person like who started off talking about BDD. And like he felt that the test driven development that they were using at the time was real not sufficient and that's how we come out with you know how to at the time like more than 10 years back uh, like having how to have like a full stack testing uh, using the BDD approach that's how you know we uh, got to know about the BDD of course we are not exactly using the same form as what Dan uh, you know thought at the time like more than 10 years back but uh, that's how it started off and um, it is it is uh, mainly a, a process where the for doing the software development we you know want to improve our communications uh, uh, you know um, between the the developers and the business people and uh, how we do that is all all about you know you having bdd and uh, what it actually uh, you know ensures us that uh, what business needs and uh, and the business uh, the, themselves actually will come out and uh, give the examples of what they want and uh, mm, it's uh, like a specification by example. That's how the business people uh, gives the the uh, requirements uh, to the developers, and then we uh, you know validate that with the uh, uh, the specific uh, test cases around that. And the journey of the BDD uh, goes like this. So mm, the business team comes out uh, with uh, the features and. Uh, then uh, once they have they uh, you know estimate the features and then give the priority of the features then we'll get into the user stories and once we you know jog down the user stories and then we you know identify the definition of done or condition of, of satisfaction then we move towards you know writing the the specific scenarios and this is all all uh, you know done by the business so far then the uh, developers are of, of course are involved uh, uh, along with them uh, in every step and then we get into the you know writing the test cases and implementation and validating with them again that's how the loop closes and looking at what format the BDD you know prescribes us is like we will have a user story and uh, it will be uh, in the agile user story model, you know, as a you know user, you know what I want to accomplish, so that you know uh, what I'll do, so I'll get uh, you know uh, what the result that I'm looking at, and then uh, the uh, business analysts uh, then get into the scenarios, and they, they actually give us what we call as gherkins, gherkins format, and 
you know given when and then is uh, the format you know they they will uh, provide us the the uh, examples that will validate you know using our code and uh, cucumber is the most popular tool we have for the bdd uh, uh, as of now and uh, you know uh, this is the you know the way we can actually visualize you know what uh, you know cucumber does mm, uh, for us like uh, we want to uh, we start off and uh, our uh, you know goal is to get to the production software and how we get that is you know first we work with the business team and uh, you know going to the discovery mode and start exploring and writing the examples uh, uh, and then it gets into the features and we create a lot of feature files and prioritized and uh, then scenarios are written and all are actually mm, uh, given acceptance criteria with for each of the scenarios and then uh, the implementation is done and of course we use the tdd and then it also uh, you know mm, uh, includes writing the uh, you know acceptance testing and mm, it is definitely through the automation uh, that we do writing all these test cases and then it's validated by the you know the users and then that's how we get to the production cycle and typically everything happens like this in in a week or you know two weeks time all these things in agile fashion and uh, cucumber is in like an open source tool um, and uh, it, it it's so simple like it uh, you know comes up with the plain uh, test text specifications and um, implementation exists for uh, you know primarily i think it started off with ruby but now luckily we have it for java and um, i have actually experienced cucumber through groovy uh, i wouldn't be covering uh, much of it here but uh, you know that's very uh, popular way of you know using the cucumber and and several other languages also you know we can do it and uh, let's look at what does it it has and what are the advantages it uh, gives us? So th these are like different uh, mm, levels of the you know cucumber. You know, as mm, we have been discussing, you know, for a project, it all starts with the the feature files. Then it gets into the scenarios, and then it is about steps. And till the time it is the business facing. Mm, uh, role and uh, responsibility lies with them It, it could be like uh, we use the Jasmine um, for writing the, the test cases, or if it is uh, um, uh, Groovy, we'll be you know, having the you know G unit uh, for writing the test cases. Then once we write write the failed test case, then we, we actually write actual code. Then we really make uh, make sure it works. Then then you get to the refactor cycle, and then 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 only we can actually check in the code uh, with the test case. Along with that, along with the unit test case, that is our TDD cycle. But uh, we don't really stop there. Uh, and then once we complete and have the, the entire application is ready, then 
then we'll be uh, using the the PDD. By the time we even the features and scenarios all are ready. So the specific scenarios that are relevant for our code are actually captured in the the PDD cycle itself. Right. But through the application is what uh, we uh, do the automation testing mm, and uh, uh, like using the uh, Jeff and uh, uh, Spark uh, and using the Groovy, we do the uh, testing here. Mm, however, uh, for the simplicity sake, uh, haven't uh, mm, uh, captured all those, and we are uh, using a simplest possible case today. That is how we can use the DBDD with Java itself. But typically, in, a, in an application development, like web application development, we use the DBDD uh, for the full stack testing. Okay, so BDD is something that you don't can introduce you again? Uh, from scratch. So you, to begin with, you start with test driven development, and at some point in your development cycle, you switch over to BDD. Everything happens parallelly. Like um, uh, when uh, when uh, a sprint starts, uh, we will have the uh, user stories into the current sprint backlog, and uh, it, it 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 will have the user stories and scenarios, and uh, the the. So capturing the, the features and the scenarios itself could be different from for different projects and different clients. For our case, uh, we used to author the, the feature files and the scenarios based on the, the user story scenarios that the uh, business team has provided. So we used to create the feature files and the uh, scenarios based on because they have already uh, mentioned the acceptance criteria as part of the user stories. But it could be in some other projects, the business might be actually writing the features uh, and the, the scenarios. Okay. Mm. Even though those are very simple, sometimes business may have resistance yeah. not to get into that layer. Right. They may only be using the TFS and uh, creating the you know, user stories and the uh, test cases, but they may not really be interested in or have the bandwidth to write the cucumber features and the scenarios. That's where. Um, mm, it becomes then uh, the part of the develop developers uh, work. Connectivity. I am connected. Uh, connected. You have to join that. So look, so looking at advantages, advantages uh, we have, uh, I'm getting a call. Thank you. It, it, uh, the main advantage of Cucumber is it provides a single source of truth. B business will see what we see and everybody is see uh, with, with the uh, examples for the specifications they have provided. And everybody sees the same 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 thing there, so that's the beauty of it. And it's everybody connected on the same thing, and it's always the focus is on customer. We uh, always get the actual executable specifications from the customer itself. So that's the beauty of it, and it actually provides the rework because we capture specifications correctly, uh, so validation is easier. And also because we are going to use automation here. It's a regression is quite simple. Just every time, every for every bill, we have a regression done automatically. So the uh, less re, it's a less rework. So costly regressions won't be there. You know these are the main advantages you get. So coming to the specific Cucumber implementation, that is a Cucumber JVM. Uh, it is uh, for the Java for the all the JVM languages. And how do we run it? If there are several ways to run it. Uh, like we can use a simple JUnit runner, or we can use a command line, uh, and we or we can use Android runner, or we can use a third-party runner. And today we will be using the third-party runner, that is the the IntelliJ IDEA runner that we'll use today. And how will we use uh, Cucumber with Java? What I'm going to demo actually I capture into the screen also that way. I mean, we'll get to know what I'm doing here. Like, we'll we'll use uh, uh, you know Maven way of doing it today for the the simple example that we'll have, and uh, you know we we'll we'll update the POM file once we create it, and then uh, we actually capture the uh, the features as part of the resources, and we'll just clean up a little bit, and then we use the third party runner that's the Qs runner, 
um, here. And uh, we also installed some of the softwares like Cucumber for Java for us to make it easy. And then we actually write, capture the, the specifications. So that's what we'll do for this today's simple example. And now coming to the uh, more about the BDD, like which uh, practical in situations like we actually use Jeb. Jeb is the uh, another uh, framework that is mainly for the web automation, but it's for, uh, built for the browsers. And uh, you know, it is built on the top of the sel Selenium uh, and it provides a lot of you know, mm, features uh, mm, here. Like uh, it allows us to, uh, you know, uh, move between the pages uh, using the uh, you know page pattern, and uh, it allows us to uh, you know use a lot of other utilities like jQuery as part of it. So it's one of the frameworks. And and question is why I'm bringing that here as part of the Cucumber with Java, right? The interesting thing is Java actually works with Groovy, and Groovy is part of the you know Java ecosystem. So I thought uh, it is worthwhile to mention about one of the uh, nice things we got through Java as which we are using for the browser automation, even though I'm not covering that in the demo. And so the one of the greatest things that Jeb provides is the object page object modeling. Every web page that uh, we, we can capture as a you know page object and then easy to configure and use it. So this covers the presentation part and uh, now I'll move to the demo part. I am using uh, the IntelliJ IDEA community versions. As uh, most of us know, IntelliJ provides two uh, ways to use it, community and ultimate. And uh, today I'll be using the community version to demonstrate this. So we'll create a new project. And we'll be using the uh, Maven uh, based project and we'll be creating uh, through arch type. We'll be using the quick, quick start uh, at Maven arch type here. And uh, the example I'll be taking is like, a, yeah, example I'm taking is uh, like, a, uh, if you want to uh, like uh, create a simple application on calculator, like using the, you know, add in a calculator, how we, how do we do it using the BDD and Java? So I'm giving com.calculator as any group ID and artifact ID as calculator. I'm going with the defaults for version. And then Maven shows me you know, what I have done so far. So I'm giving the name of the project as calculator. I need to create one more because we already have one.
So we are getting our project created, and uh, you can see that the the POM file that we get through the Archetype, uh, you know, has comes up like this. So uh, what what we'll do is like it also does the build for us first build. So um, it provides uh, a dependency with the older JUnit version that we'll be replacing. Also, we'll be adding the the Cucumber dependencies here and also the repository. I'm going to use the Sonar type repository here. Also, I'm going to have two other dependencies other than JUnit using the new version of JUnit. So you can see there are three dependencies that Oh, sorry. You're correct. So I'll just remove the older one. I have a JUnit uh, version, four version, and uh, Qux uh, uh, library for JUnit and Java, Cucumba Java. These are the dependencies that I'll be using for this demo. So you can see that the IntelliJ idea all uh, uh, picks up those for me already and creates those external libraries part of the project that I can use. So it provides a blank app class that I don't need that I'll be deleting. And as I mentioned uh, in my presentation, we'll be, we'll be creating the resources folder. and we'll make it as test resources root so that the Qx runner can pick it up. There might be a better archetype than what I have used, but uh, this is this was easy to use, which where we have some little work to do to configure the project. So next step is to actually add our Qx runner through which we can launch the cucumber. So we'll create a 
new class in Java in the in the test. This is this is only one class is required to run the cucumber for all the features. We need one one placeholder to to launch the cucumber. That's what we are adding now. So it is a simple class. It just, uh, you know, imports the Cucumber uh, API JNAs and uh, also it uses the run with because we are going to have JNA to run with Cucumber. That's how we'll be calling the Cucumber here. And and what we are telling is uh, this is a place where you can find all my features. So Intel just already compiled that for us. And let's see what happens like um, if, if we run this now. Now we will uh, we'll run it. Uh, we'll uh, first we'll uh, also we need to uh, you know uh, add a cucumber for Java um, and uh, uh, I already did, added it, but I'll show you know how you can add it. So once you go to the settings in IntelliJ, you can click plugins. So you need to install it for the first time, Cucumber for Java. It helps in a lot of things for you like uh, indentation, syntax highlighting, code completion and all that. Yes, I'll be finishing by that. So I'll be going a little fast now. So let's let's add a, the uh, feature and scenario and let's run it now in 10 minutes. So in the resources, I'm adding a new file. I'm calling it calculator.feature. It is very simple. I'm saying that uh, as a user, I want to use calculator. So, you know, I don't have to calculate myself. And one sa sample scenario I've taken for demo is like, I want to add two numbers and get the result and validate the result using the Gherkin scenario given when then. You know, that's my you know intention as a user given to the developer. So we have feature and we have Qx runner. And so let's give it a try and run it. So I'm calling like using the run QX runner. Let's see what it does. So the beauty of Cucumber is like, uh, if you go back here, uh, you will see that, uh, you know, step, def step definitions is something that we need to accomplish. And using, uh, you know, IntelliJ and Cucumber, these actually got generated for us here. So it will tell us all the missing steps uh, that it could not find for the feature and scenarios. And what we need to do is just copy paste into uh, a new class that we'll be writing now. So we will create a class uh, in the in the test folder and uh, we call it as uh, calculator steps. And we'll copy that all the things that it provided to us.
and then we'll fix the compiling issues and then so far we haven't written actual code yet so we'll be writing the actual code now so let's create a calculator cat class now so that that we can validate uh, as part of the BDD I have a simple uh, calculator class which you know stores the result and gives the result for a you know add operation so once we have the class let's uh, refer that in our uh, steps file basically we'll be adding uh, you know the object and uh, also will be you know using the before feature of the cucumber to create the object as a setup so we have our object ready so now let's we only thing pending is to validate as part of our scenario so we have three steps like I have a calculator then I want to add two numbers and I want the result to be validated so let's uh, do the assertions now so we'll be adding assert not null because we want to have really have a calculator here to begin with and uh, we want to capture the value into the object then really we want to assert that what we get is what user wanted so we have the code done and uh, there is just one more thing like we want to have the result value captured into this argument So let's run the cubes runner again to see if is our code meeting the the specification that your user has provided. And you can see the cubes runner and it has a nice feature and steps and it shows nice okay with green color that I could able to validate all my steps. It says one you know scenario passed and three steps passed and the time taken. This is the simplest result, but really we we will get the you know the web reports typically when we you know connect with the you know continuous integration or locally you know with Jenkins or like that. But this is the simplest way, you know, we can see when we are running on the workstation. So we have another four minutes. Any questions? Correct. So you are correct uh, in a way that first we have actually, you know, written the test case, then actually written the actual code and then validated it. So it's sort of a TDD here, but it's more of behavioral driven, you know, not simply the, you know, test driven. We are really validating the, the scenarios. So you can use it in that form, form as well if you think of like using, you know, as a unit test case also. Right. Typically, uh, in the projects I have worked, like I have like 50, 60 features that I have witnessed, and we map usually one feature uh, with uh, uh, you know one test file, one feature file, and one steps file. But sometimes it becomes huge, thousands of lines, because feature may have so many use cases. 
then we actually break into multiple files too. So all that more, more than one developer can work parallelly and also uh, easy to maintain. So it varies from project to project, I'll say. Business should write it. Business should write it. But sometimes they end up just maintaining the TFS and then uh, it becomes the developer's uh, responsibility to take it forward and same things into the uh, scenarios. We try to educate business in the project that I worked in, but uh, mm, yes. Yes. Mm. They only can uh, want to uh, manage the TFS user stories most of the time. So thank you. Uh, sure. What we'll do is uh, after the.